blood supply of bone a long bone consists of three parts two ends and a shaft the ends of the bone are known as epiphysis the shaft is known as diaphysis the ends of the bone which ossify that is develop from the secondary centers are known as epiphysis the shaft of a long bone which develops from primary center is known as diaphysis the epiphyseal ends of the diaphysis are known as metaphysis a typical long bone has blood supply from the following sources number 1 nutrient artery number 2 epiphyseal artery number 3 periosteal arteries and number 4 metaphyseal artery nutrient artery it enters the shaft through nutrient foramen and it divides into an ascending and a descending branches the nutrient artery supplies medullary cavity inner two third of the cortex and metaphysis epiphyseal artery it is derived from very articular vascular arcades and it enters the ends of the bone or the epiphysis through numerous vascular foramen and supplies the epiphysis periosteal arteries it is present in the periosteum that is outer covering of the bone and it supplies the outer one third of the cortex the metaphyseal arteries are derived from neighboring vessels and it supplies the metaphysis in children the metaphysis is the zone of active growth and the metaphysis has rich blood supply through end arteries which has and have been bent so it is a common site of osteomyelitis in children because the bacteria or emboli gets trapped in the hairpin bed after epiphyseal fusion see here that is epiphysis here the epiphyseal fusion is taking place after epiphyseal fusion vascular communication or established between the epiphysis and the metaphysis and there are no more end arteries in the metaphysis and no longer it is subjected to osteomyelitis epiphysis what is epiphysis the ends of the bone which ossify from the secondary centers are known as epiphysis types of epiphysis there are four types of epiphysis pressure epiphysis traction epiphysis atavistic epiphysis and apparent epiphysis pressure epiphysis it takes part in weight transmission and joint formation example 
head of femur, lower end of radius. Traction epiphysis. It does not take place in weight transmission and joint formation. Example, trochanters of femur and tubercles of humerus. That is greater and lesser trochanter of femur and greater and lesser tubercle of humerus. Atavistic epiphysis. It represents phylogenetically an individual bone which is fused to another bone in human. Example, coracoid process of scapula or strigonum or lateral tubercle of talus. Aberrant epiphysis. It is not always present. Example, head of first metacarpal bone and base of other metacarpal bones. Thank you.